What's going on, guys? Larcy's is here, and welcome back to Yu Gi Oh! Master Duels 102. Today, we're going to go into cards. I'm going to show you pretty much every card type, and then at the end, I'm going to show you some staples that you should be running in Master Duels. So, like I said, keep in mind, I'm not going to show you all the staples in the game, I'm going to show you the main ones that most of the people run. Alright, so this is how pretty much the deck is normally going to look. The max, the minimum is 40, the max is 60. So, let's just go through them. These are basic cards. 90% of the decks don't run them. Don't worry about them. I just want to show you how they look. Now, these ones are going to be the ones you're going to be running into. These orange, peach looking colors. That each one has different effects depending on the type of deck you want to run. So, you got to keep that in mind. Not everything's going to do the same thing. This, it all depends on their type of cards. This is, you know, they have different ones. They have SR, R, U, R, and each one's stronger or weaker depending on what they do. So let's just continue with that. Now these are magic cards. These are going to be the crutch of your deck. Now they got, you got the basic ones like this that you can just play as long as the conditions are met. You have equip cards where you can equip on monsters and depending on what they do, they can give you attack buff, they can give you attack debuff, whatever. They have field cards. These are, these are all general, they all do different things so I can't even go through them. And they got ritual cards that summon really powerful monsters as long as you have monsters in your hand. These are continuous magic cards that stay in the field as long as you don't pop them. And uh, whatever effect it happen, whatever effect it does, it just stays on the field. These are quick effects. They, these are kind of like counter plays that you can play whenever you want. Now we get to traps. These trap cards, as long as the condition is met, you can just play as is because they're just completely blank. So you can just play as long as the condition is met. Now these are counter trap cards. These are played after their opponent does something. As long as the conditions is met, you could actually play these counter cards and kind of stop whatever they're doing. And just like magic cards, trap cards has continuous magic. I mean, has continuous trap cards. So as long as they stay in the field, they you know, as long as you don't pop it, the whatever the trap does, it stays forever. Now every card right here costs 30 points as long as you make it. 30 RN, 30 R, 30 SR, 30 URs. Now I know you guys are wondering, what are the cards I should be focused on? You just show me basic cards. I just want to go through it. Yeah, you're right. But now let's go some let's go some let's go through some staples. Let's show you what you should be looking for. Let's show you what you should be putting in the decks if you decide to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels. So let's go and see what we have. Let's go through the staples. Now I gotta let you guys know you don't get these staples off the jump. You have to earn these staples. You gotta make them either by the each staple here costs 30 UR. Now of course there's more staples in the game than the ones I'm showing you, but these are the main ones that people play. They cost 30 UR, so please use your UR sparingly. These are very high, very expensive cards. But let's go through them. Effect Veil. Now what it does is that when the opponent summons a card and he's about to do his effect, if you're not sure what the effect is or you just don't want to read it, you throw Effect Veil out. As long as the Effect Veil doesn't get stopped, you can just negate the effect and pretty much whatever he's about to do, this gets stopped. It's a very good card, but not a lot of people play it, surprisingly. Maxi, this card stops duels. Depending on how the, the duel goes, and if it's early enough, if you maxi properly, you can as long as it doesn't get stopped, you can pretty much win the duel. What Max what Maxi's does is as long as it's in your hand, you throw it to the graveyard. If it doesn't get stopped, if your opponent special summons, you draw a card. Period. Now there's cards that stop the draw phase. Did they stop you from drawing? Yes, but not a lot of people run them, so it's okay. Once you play Maxi and they can't stop it, you, most of the time they're just going to surrender. Now, if they don't, you just draw like a psychopath, and it's really fun. Now, Ash Blossom, what does Ash Blossom do? She stops Maxi. So, say for instance, I do Maxi, you can just do Ash Blossom, and then there you go. I can't draw no more. And now, say for instance, oh, what if I don't have Maxi? Well, Ash Blossom is still good, because Ash Blossom, she stops searches. So, say for instance, your card is about to search for a dragon, spellcaster, warrior, it doesn't matter. Or even if you have a magic card that searches for something, you just throw out Ash Blossom. And as long as it doesn't get stopped, it will just cancel that search, period. It's a very powerful card. It ends duels, just like Maxi. The Nibiru, what Nibiru does is that as long as your opponent, say for instance, your opponent is just doing a crazy combo. The minute he summons five monsters, you can pretty much gulp up all those cards. And you summon Nibiru on your on your on your field. Now the only negative about Nibiru is that you give him a token of all those cards that you suck sucked up. You give him a token of all the combined damage of 
it's attack and defense. So you can just you sometimes you can give him a really beasty card, and if you can't handle it, it's gonna kill you. So please use Nibiru wisely. If it's your turn and you Nibiru them, I hope you have a card that can stop that token. Because if you don't, they're gonna kill you next turn. Monster Reborn is a generic card that can summon any card from the graveyard. Very important, very fun. Now there are cards that don't get summoned from Monster Reborn. And that's only because they didn't get summoned properly. So say for instance a fusion get, didn't get fused and got put in the field, then you can't go for that fusion. Certain synchros, if they didn't get synchro properly, you can't go for those synchros. Called by the grave. Now when you remember when I mentioned Ash Blossom, Maxi, and Failure, and I said, hey, if this doesn't get stopped, guess what? This card stops all those cards. As long like say for instance I throw Maxi from the graveyard, if you have Call by the Grave, you can play Call by the Grave and just cancel my effect. And I can't draw no more. Or I can't stop you from searching. Or I can't stop you from negating your effect. Call by the Grave stops a lot of cards. And if you run, like, if an opponent runs multiple of certain cards, and that card that they play on the field is in that graveyard, you could target that card, and that, that card doesn't have effect no more. It's a very versatile and very strong card. Highly recommend this card as well. Very, very strong. Very, very powerful. So, it is it's run by a lot of decks. Like I said, most of these cards are run multiple times. Now we got this very popular trap card that's been growing on the ranks of permanence. What a permanence does is as long as you have no cards on your field, you can summon, you can play this card, period. Now if your opponent has a monster, say for instance he's trying to do an effect, you can play a permanence and stop that effect. That's it. You just stop it. And you negate it and then now that monster's just standing there looking pretty. You can do it on their turn, you can do it on your turn. As long as you have no cards on your field, then you can play this card. So you can wait for your opponent to end this turn, and then if you have this card, you can just kind of do a permanence and stop them. So it's kind of cool. And the last but not least is Bearing the Floor. Now, this is a single card, which I'm going to explain in the later videos. But if you somehow manage to summon this Synchro Beast, she negates any card. It doesn't matter what happens. It could be on the field. It could be in the hand. It could be in the graveyard. It doesn't matter. She just negates, period. And she pops a card. And she's very strong. And also, she just looks like a badass. So... These are like seven to eight cards that are very strong, that are very powerful, and that are super expensive. Keep that in mind. It's <laughs> super expensive. But once you get these staples, you kind of be unstoppable. But that's all we have to do for now. So What's that's some on, of the guys? generic staples that have in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, well, obviously, Yu -Oh. there's way well, more than the ones I showed you. There are few of my buddies ones don't that actually just came out that I kind of forgot to put in. Try my best to but do it's this okay. You guys kind of have a general idea of what to play. And they say, unfortunately, this staples are very expensive so you got to be careful how you use your URs because you know depending on the deck you make it could be very expensive so you know your first deck is going to be the first the most expensive one so you got to keep that in mind but that's it for now guys i hope you guys enjoyed to see hit that like button if you did subscribe share with your friends if they want you think they'll be interested in Yu-Gi-Oh. until then guys i'll see you next time